Hello friends, my name is Dr. Rena Chavla. I am senior faculty in obstetrics and gynecology. Today I am here to tell you what a tricky subject obstetrics can be. Obstetrics is akin to living on the edge. And it's not about saving one life or two lives, it's about saving the entire family. In a country like ours, India, where healthcare facilities are still limited in many pockets of the country, the ability to identify complications early and manage them is priceless. This is one such scenario. We had a patient, a young 18-year-old girl, primary gravida, referred to us from the primary healthcare centre with a history of seizures for a few hours earlier. She had already received magnesium sulphate at the primary health centre and we all know magnesium sulphate is basically given for the prophylaxis and treatment of eclampsia and any seizure disorder in pregnancy should be considered as eclampsia unless proven otherwise. So this young girl was brought to us, she was 36 weeks pregnant, primary gravida with history of seizures, most likely eclampsia, received magnesium sulphate and she was sent to us for further emergency care. Now when she came to us, she was drowsy in the post-ictal phase. Her blood pressure was still very very high, it was almost 160 by 110 millimeters of mercury and when we did an abdominal examination, there was evidence of fetal growth restriction, the uterine height was less than the period of gestation and on auscultation there was fetal bradycardia, the fetal heart was around 110 beats per minute. So what did we do? We started immediate resuscitative measures. We continued magnesium sulphate. We gave her IV labetalol, which is the antihypertensive of choice in preeclampsia and eclampsia. And along with that, along with the resuscitative measures, the anti-seizure medication, the antihypertensive medication, the obstetric management is paramount in preeclampsia eclampsia. Now, whenever we have any obstetric scenario, and I always teach this to my students, any obstetric scenario, just ask yourself two questions. What are those questions? The first one is, when will I deliver this patient? And the second question is, how will I deliver this patient? Put yourself in any obstetric scenario or recall any question that, ha that you have come across earlier. And these two questions are all that is needed to solve that problem. Please remember, when should I deliver this patient? Okay, and that depends on the period of gestation and also on the emergency or the condition that you are dealing with. And the second question is, how will I deliver this patient? And we know we just have two routes, either a vaginal delivery or a cesarean section. These two questions, if you answer them, if you think a little bit, answer them, it solves all your problems in obstetrics. So this patient, the obstetric management, the two questions that came to our mind were, Number one, when will I deliver her? And the answer is immediately. Irrespective of the gestational age, eclampsia is an obstetric emergency. She needs to be delivered immediately. Whether she is 24 weeks or 34 weeks or 38 weeks, doesn't matter. Eclampsia needs immediate obstetric management and that is delivery. Delivery is the treatment in, is the final end treatment in eclampsia. The second question is, how will I deliver this patient? Now, when we did our NST of this patient, a non-stress test, there, were, there was fetal bradycardia as was heard on auscultation and there were spontaneous decelerations. So we, and she was not in labor, the uterus was relaxed. So we have a scenario where we have two choices, either a vaginal delivery or a cesarean delivery. Fetal distress, when it is seen, always, always a cesarean delivery unless she is just about to deliver. So this lady was nowhere near delivery and there was fetal distress, so a cesarean section was done for her. An emergency cesarean section was done after stabilizing her. And as you can see behind me, the during the cesarean, once the uterine incision was given, the lower segment was cut. Meconium was there and was seen in the amniotic fluid, which is again a sign that the fetus must have been distressed. But when the baby came out, that cry which you hear, that cry is just like music to the ears to all that were present in the operation theater. So that, friends, is what obstetrics is. That you can see the mother and the baby around 48 to 72 hours post delivery. They are absolutely fine. And that joy, that smile we see on the mother's face, on the family's face, that happiness is what is obstetrics.